Whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome back to the Chandler's Wildlife Podcast. Ooh. I like that. Real dangerous out here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I got special guest on Stone Liquorique, my yee, yee. brother. What's up, brother? Man? I've known him since he was 12. I was 13 on the Native American Reservation doing gator shows. Good times. Good times. Dude, it's, it's crazy how much shit you and I have seen, how much we've grown up around. Like... It's crazy how long it's been, too. <laughs> yeah, because I, I remember when we first became friends, I, I, you had bleach blonde hair. I was a little dork with a cowboy hat. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were like the runts of Native Village. I remember coming in there, and I was like so shy. And you're like, what are you, antisocial or something? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. It, it's so crazy, because a lot of people might hear us talk about Native Village, because that's just like a big part of our childhood growing up. And literally, like we experienced the, the most crazy crazy shit being there yeah like, we, we always talk about it like what if the native village was here today can you explain <laughs> to the people watching what native village was native village was basically an animal sanctuary on the seminal indian reservation so it, it was more like a alligator wrestling facility though yeah it was, it was really it was, it was like gator shows but like depending on like what year you came in they had like cougars tigers they had lions they had every type of venomous snake you could think of yeah what, what it, we, we were there was more like native stuff. It, yeah, right? it was more native. And then because of David Weathers, we had like a king cobra in the snake room. We had like monocled cobras and gaboon vipers and yeah. all kinds of crazy shit. Um, I mean, we had a baboon on the property. That Congo. Would scream. Man. Do you remember and then that? like animals would just come and go throughout the native village too. <laughs> so. I, I, I really learned to have a, a big respect for uh, primates and uh, also not wanting to work with them in the future because of Congo, the baboon. So... Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, do you remember when people would come in and uh, they would have to bring their kids away from the cages and we'd have to tell like, he was literally start to masturbate and, uh, and he would start to eat his own uh, secretions. <laughs> would, like we're little kids and we had to learn quick what, what it was to be around nature yeah, and, and also how to direct families away from that enclosure. So they didn't have to see that. I think the biggest thing about native village was there was like really, really young kids who were the volunteers but then there was like a bunch of adults. So we're exposed to like the real world, the adult world while we're 12 and 13 years old, you know? Yeah. And that's what really like helped us. I think I learned more about people than I learned about animals being in <laughs> yeah. a village. I was like, yeah, that's what I don't want to be. But at the same time, we gained like so many skills. Yeah. I mean, like we met some of our best friends. Like I met you. You're yeah. literally my best friend. Mm-hmm. I, I, I met some of the craziest animal handlers I've ever met in my life. I met some of the craziest people mentally yeah. that I've ever met in my life. I, I was, you know, I got chased with a hammer one time by, <laughs> by some dude who, who like misconstrued uh, what was some, something that was going on. Like, Hey, I told you to rake the leaf. What are you doing? And they're like coming out with a hammer. Like dude. Native Village was so crazy. It was so backwards. And it, but it at was the same like, time it was so cool. It was like there. the last era where there was really no rules and like yeah. social media wasn't really a thing. So it was like anything really goes yeah. nowadays. That stuff would not, like not what was fly. big when we we're at Native Village was Facebook, and Facebook was like the the most that was talked about. Like Instagram wasn't a big deal. People were kind of not really doing YouTube at the time. Yeah, and it was just like we just wanted to be around alligators. We just wanted to wrestle alligators. And people and not don't get in trouble. For people it. don't understand. Like we did it all for free. Like now people want to get paid and they want hours. We're just like, nope, we're ready to slave it out for two weeks just to wrestle a gator once. You Literally, know? yeah. I remember we would we would bust. Our, we were little kids and we were we would bust our ass. We would rake the whole entire facility. We'd rake all the leaves with a rake because it was mostly sand where we'd walk around make sure the animals had food and water if uh if we were around long enough we'd like help drain pits but at the most we would once a month be able to jump on a gator's back and help yeah. perform an alligator wrestling show yeah for real we, yeah. we jumped in the baby gator pit a lot but yeah yeah, yeah wrestling big gators like it was not that often we were really working for it. it it was like it was like our drug to be able to go into a pit have permission from the the head guy which was ian tyson at the time who would by the way our mentor is like a bad, <laughs> bad, a savage, bad motherfucker. And I'm not just like, right. I'm tell, like he could wrestle a 13 foot gator and he could just beat your ass. Like he could flip your car over with you inside. He's a gorilla. Remember the middle pit with the crocodiles chewing on his ankle. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't there for that day. Can you reiterate on that story? Oh my God, man. Um, yeah. So we had three different pits. We had the baby alligator pit, which had all the baby alligators, baby crocs, and like two baby came in. Then there was the middle pit, which was like, five six foot gators and then like a couple Nile crocodiles the like nasty five ones. foot yeah and he was in there one day 
I don't know what he was doing, but he had a gator like in his arms. He catches his five foot gator. And then a now croc just goes, ah, and like puts his, his ankle in its mouth. And then Ian like grabs the gator and like hits the croc with the gator. <laughs> Literally using the alligator's weapon yeah. to get the crocodile off of him. Yeah, pretty pretty crazy. I mean, obviously didn't hurt the crocodile or the gator, but And then we had we had Spud. Spud was the old man in the back of the village. He was he was always so nice to us. But to most people, he was so grumpy. Yeah, he, he was. No, he put, was grumpy. <laughs> but he was, he was also like a. He was crazy. He, remember, he was but, smart too. Like you would learn little things from every guy there. Like Spud taught me about how they would shift the liver inside their body to change the buoyancy. Yeah, in the water. so an alligator can submerge itself. Yeah, bro. How how about the fact that like if a crocodile or an alligator would try Spud, he would literally like treat it like a bad dog <laughs> like yeah, he, i remember seeing, i remember they seen this guy go to a six seven foot nile crocodile and like touching it on the nose like it was a like it was a gator and, yeah and he was just like ah yo you think you're slick oh, oh, oh even aries on the nose. there's a video of uh pharaoh getting like death rolled and then aries comes to like get pharaoh while he's rolling and spud's like hey get out of here and, like <laughs> it's him with this thing yeah and for those of you guys that don't see a lot of the main channel videos or didn't hear this message. Aerie is the crocodile that I got is one of the first crocodiles that Stone and I worked with on the Native American reservation. He was yeah. literally in our alligator wrestling pit. And he was known to just ambush you. Like you're wrestling yeah. a gator and then a now croc just he runs up. And he <laughs> didn't start to get like a little chill until like he was at the outpost and Chris Gillette was messing with him a lot. But yeah, but like at the native village, this croc was wild and he still is wild. He tries yeah. to ambush me here. But he's gotten like, huge. Like at, at the village, he was like, what? Six, eight, seven foot. Yeah, I was going to say like, like eight foot, but now yeah. he's like, what, like 12 foot? Just massive. Yeah, I remember when Ares arrived and they were, they were unloading him out of that crate and uh, Trey Hooten from Gator Boys was like, yeah, I really don't know what this thing is. I don't know if it's a <laughs> Siamese or a saltwater crocodile mix or I don't know what it is. Yeah, we were just talking. He said he, he did like a full alligator wrestling show on the croc. That's like crazy. Face off, Florida smile on, yeah. on that croc. For a show, bro. So when it comes to Gator wrestling, are you are you still gonna start wrestling? Are you still gonna no, go back I'm, to FAWC? I'm done. I'm done. I literally yesterday I talked to Clint on the phone and he was like, "Oh, just making sure you still want to judge." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So it's gonna be that's like the most fun you can. Yeah, do. it's like gonna be like judging and all watching. the all the old winners are gonna be judging. So me, Pharaoh, and uh, Justin and Paul Simmons too. So those of you guys who don't know what that is, FAWC is Freestyle Alligator Wrestling Competition and Stone won and won a trophy and everything. And literally what you're doing is you're going into uh, a pen area that's half water. You can pull the gator out of the area and it's basically doing whatever you can to show off different stunts with a, with an alligator. And yeah, there's like dangerous and difficulty in in stunts. There's showmanship, alligator aggressiveness. Um there's like another category, it's like handling and then back in the day, they used to have like the underwater category. Dude, too. that's the thing. Stone and I grew up watching the first FAWC videos on YouTube and FAWC had stopped. So we would see these old videos yeah, they, of, <laughs> of a deep water pool where the Gator Boys guys like Paul Bedard, Jimmy Riffle, uh, all these random alligator handlers from across the state, Bob Freer from the outpost, they would all be jumping in here to compete for a prize, a money prize. And it was just showing off their skill in the water and bringing the gator up on land to see what they yeah. can get away with. Like all the legends used to be shoemaker, gator wrestlers back in the day like, competing against each other. We would watch that stuff over. I've like yeah, that like, one FAWC video with shoemaker. We watched that over like probably like a hundred times. Oh yeah. At the Oakley village, him doing it to, to the Michael Jackson song, like holding the gator by the middle of the jaws, walking around it, or even all this crazy underwater stuff. We the underwater was the best man. And that's something we never got to do. I mean, we got to do it at the outpost, which was awesome, yeah, yeah, but it wasn't that. like cameras under the water and like, and nothing, know, plexiglass. nothing's more height than the hard rock casino <laughs> in Hollywood, <laughs> yeah, Florida, yeah. a giant guitar, with an animal arena in the background where you could do these gator shows. And we're not like beating up these alligators or anything. This is just, uh, it's just gently handling the animals and working them in certain positions where you can get away with stunts. And it's just what an alligator shows usually, but this is a competition where like the best handlers come to compete. Although like, of course there's always some people that might be more rough than others, but yeah, it's all depending on the handler. And a couple of those guys were even asked not to come back. Oh, really? <laughs> They're really rough. Yeah. Dude, so the last FAWC that you went to, I didn't make it out there. I hadn't been to the last couple FAWC <laughs> since I stopped doing it, but you went and I was just like, man. I think more people got bit uh, at that uh, FAWC yeah, than just, any other look, FAWC. You wanted to see some people. <laughs> Stone was like, I'm going to go because I want to. I want to see if I can get some crazy stuff on footage. <laughs> and you did. You got like the craziest bite I've ever seen on that, footage. That's why people 
that's why people watch bull riding. That's why people watch alligator wrestling because they know, you know, something's gonna go down. It's the danger, like that gets them going. You How, know? What was this guy's name that got that got bit up? <sighs> How many times did he get bit? <laughs> I don't this know. Guy, I really watched this I guy get bit. Like, what was it? Like six times or five times within like thirty seconds? Or yeah, 20 the seconds? first bite. What was this? This is one guy oh, yeah. we're talking about. The first bite, yeah, total rookie guy. He was just like a fan of it, and then convinced them that he's done it before, and they're like, okay, yeah, sure, you know, you can go in. Starts wrestling the gator. The first bite was on his forearm. Latches onto the forearm. Thank God, comes off of his forearm. Then the next bite was He's on blindfolded, his... blindfolded, right? Oh, yeah, he was blindfolded. He was, he was I think he could see. blindfolded. <laughs> like, dude. Wrestling an alligator for the first time, <laughs> blindfolded. So, bite number one on his forearm. Bite number two, bites him on the knee, rolls. Then, lets go of his knee, bites his thumb, rolls. And then, oh. like, the last bite on the way out, it just, like, I guess, nicked his chest is what I heard. But, yeah. Dude, it's one thing <clears> to get <throat> bit on, like, your hand and be like, ah, oh, my hand's hurt. But then to get bit like you were shot with an alligator gun. Like, yeah. you literally have a bite on your chest, on your thumb, on your leg. I told you there was, like, a native guy next to me. He's like, James, get that guy out of there. Yeah. He's going, <laughs> yeah. Because, like, the in the first couple FAWCs that came back, because, like I said, when we were little kids, we watched these videos of the old school guys doing it. It stopped for years. It stopped for, like, what, six years? I was going to say years? five years, yeah. It stopped for a long time. And then they did their first ever FAWC again, but they did it at the Brighton Field Festival, which is out near Okeechobee on the reservation. And it's like... Cowboys and Native Americans everywhere. It's gator wrestling and cow and bull riding. It's crazy. It's like straight out of Yellowstone, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, it's literally an episode <laughs> of Yellowstone, but in Florida. And literally, the the idea is like some of the best handlers come out to wrestle, but also like, okay, here are some guys that like think they can wrestle. And yeah. these guys are going to show us some... Which, that also makes it makes yeah, the event too. It's, it's literally know? like NASCAR. It's like people are coming out to see some crashes. But dude, like there was one point where we were those rookie guys, and yeah. they didn't know if we could wrestle or not. And then boom, couple years in, and we're winning it. Bro, you, you know, remember, we're placing and we're winning it. Yeah, so. literally Stone wins the first time I did it. You you weren't old enough yet. You were still seventeen. I was eighteen. Yeah, and I literally got a ride with my brother from college. <laughs> To go wrestle when I and, and they're like he just turned eighteen his name's Trailer I was like yeah and I'm like doing head tricks smiling oh wait wasn't that when you got you got cut and then you like rubbed the blood no on that your... was my second competition oh, okay, where okay. I got cut and I took the blood and I put on the war paint and like back to that one guy who got bit it's one thing to get bit and finish the show it's another thing to just get bit and we know you're gonna get bit again like it's yeah. painful to watch you know it's not it's really not fun to watch anyone get hurt you no. Know? But I mean, especially when it's one of your homies, it's like when you got bit by the croc, people are like, why did he go back in there? It's like, dude, that's, it's part of what we do. It's part of being a man. That that's something with gator wrestling. It's like you get nicked or you get bit. Like you finish, you the, finish show. the show. Like that's yeah. your job. I mean, obviously you better be dying. Your, your you limb is still there. Yeah. yeah. So, cause you know, like there's a reason you're doing it and you got to finish the job. Like with the crocodile, there was a 10 foot Nile crocodile Aries taped up in the van. Yeah. We had to get his girlfriend. If we didn't take them at the same time, they might have started fighting in the new pit. Yeah, time is of the essence, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, like, that truck had AC, but still, like, the longer it sits there, the longer that process is, the more yeah. lactic acid. It's just hard on the animals, so. Yeah, you did what needed to be done. Plus, it was, it was badass. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about that day real quick. We, we, we were hyped. We were hyped. <laughs> we were Out of really nowhere, hyped. Bob Freer hits me up, and he's just like, hey, you still want Aries and Miss Toothy? I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. He's like... Come get them as soon as you want. <laughs> and it, it worked out perfect, too, because we just built the pit for a big gator. For, yeah, we were building it for a big alligator yeah. that didn't end up coming. Yeah. And then I don't know where he's just like, you want these crocodiles? I'm like, yes. Like, life's crazy. All the stars just align. You and know then he gives, he gives me a bunch of uh, American crocodiles with those crocodiles. So it's just like crocs on crocs. And, yeah. bro, you've known me my whole life. I've, I, I have, like, a sickness where I've been obsessing over keeping and working with crocodiles my whole life. So yeah. I'm just, like, sitting there quietly. I'll just be like. Crocs. Yeah, and to get the croc that we worked with when we were kids in a Cuban croc, an adult yeah. Cuban croc. <laughs> One that's been trying to bite people's heads off yes. for like 20-something years. And, I mean, we know they, they make the most beautiful babies. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Yeah. Stone actually got, uh, what, is it a four-year-old crocodile or five-year-old? I think it's four or five, yeah. Okay, I don't so know exactly. He, he actually has a baby named Carnage that Will Nace has been raising for years. Yeah. So, congratulations. You have Thank the you. offspring from Aries. Yeah. And, uh... I mean, hopefully we, you can get a couple more animals that we used to work with when we were kids. Because nothing's cooler than having like a gator or a croc or like a cobra that you used to see as a little kid. Yeah, it's like the sentimental value. Like, you know, like Lunge and, and Master Blaster yeah. and, and Long Jaw. All these gators that we grew up with, like, it's not about that just being an alligator. It's like, oh, 
that's like my old friend. You yeah. Know? And you'll you'll really do anything to get those animals Dude, back. we spent so much – like, forget about working with the animals. We spent so much time just sitting there, hanging out on the edge of their enclosures, just yeah. hanging out with them, sharing time. Even gator wrestling. Like, we would just sit outside my mom's house, hang out on the porch, and just talk gator wrestling. Like, oh, yeah. what if you – Touch it like that. What if you put your hand like this? And like, that's how you really become a master is like endless hours of just dialing it in and, and talking about gator wrestling. How wild is it that alligator wrestling's evolved so much from the point when we we're little kids and like doing a head trick was the craziest thing. But now Feral Gales, myself and a few other people have gone away Dude. with like holding their mouth open with your head. Like touching ha- handless head mouth. tricks. Hand- yeah. hand- <laughs> Who would have thought you could have a gator's do a head trick with no hands. Yeah. Like literally resting the teeth on your head. Every competition, I see something new. And that's the beauty of alligator wrestling. You think it's like capped off, but no, there's there's always something you can do. Like like remember when Now we, it's getting too dangerous. That's why I think yeah. last competition so many guys got bit is because it's because it's the, at the its bar peak so right high. Now. Yeah. The bar is so high. That's why I stopped doing like dangerous stuff for like my annual like gaining a lot of subscribers, for example. Yeah. Like if I hit a mil, then two mil, then three mil. I don't think I should do something more dangerous than the last thing. Because when I first started doing YouTube, I was like, I need to go die with orca whales for the next that's million why, That's why whatever. I tell the younger guys, I'm like, listen, that's one category. You got five categories. Like, master them all and you'll still win. It's yeah. not about the guy who does, like, the, the dumbest or craziest or most dangerous trick. It's about the guys who wrestle the alligator the most beautiful way, have the best showmanship, get the crowd riled up. Like, those are the guys who really win. Yeah. You know? And, uh, oh, man. Oh, wait, wait. Back to the croc story. Let's not Oh, the croc bite. <laughs> yeah, there's just so much to talk about. Yeah, so I, I got hit up by Bob to get these crocs, and I ended up going down to Homestead with Stone, Tyler, and Duff, and Justin, Justin Brown. Yeah. And we're all in a U-Haul. We had a croc box with us for Miss Toothy, and we're going to just uh, tape up Aries and put them in the back. But we had, like, a perfect game plan. Perfect. Perfect. Like, literally, it's a, it's a small enclosure. There's a slope with loose limestone rocks into a quarry hole. So nobody wants to slide into there. Nobody wants to go swimming. Mm-mm. And uh, what the idea was to call him up with the food call, get a top jaw rope on Miss Toothy since she's the most athletic and dangerous, get yeah. her into a box, and then go catch Aries mm-hmm. and be a little bit safer about it. Um, but there's too many people there. There, yeah. It was already like a little hectic off the bat. There's probably like 10 extra people than there had to be. It was like a gator wrestling competition. With yeah, there, there's, a, there's like a lot of random people that kind of just invited themselves to the caption. Yeah. And they're kind of like in the way, you know, saying whatever they're saying, kind of like trying to do a different plan. And it's like, no, 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 we got the plan. This crocodile is going from, from Bob to myself and we're going to do it real safe. Mm-hmm. So uh, a neck noose was attempted to be put on Miss Toothy. Uh, Miss Toothy darted in the water with the neck noose attached. Yeah. And uh and I grab Bob before he like lands on the now crocodile Aries. That was crazy. Like, it's it's important like when you catch a croc, it's like okay, teamwork. Like that's how you catch a croc is teamwork. If yeah. like everyone tries to be the man, that's when it yeah. it goes bad. And like even when Ian Tyson said he's like, Okay, one person has to run the show and then the others have to have to listen. Yeah, help you know? out. I feel like there was just a lot of variables and a lot of people who wanted to be like the main guy. Yeah. You know? They're like Last day with the croc. Let me. Yeah. <laughs> well, what people don't understand is that like that crocodile was owned by Bob Freer at the Everglades Outpost. Yeah. And that crocodile was being given to me under my license. And anyone else there, you know, just had nothing to do with it. And just know. like just like when good things happen, all the stars align. When bad things happen, it's like the series of unfortunate events that lead to something. Like it has to, all this stuff has to happen perfectly for like this worst case scenario, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, the new situation, then like no pump on on site, and then like all these different variables Ugh. that led. Do you remember <laughs> when people were talking the about bite? the people were talking about the pump? Like you should have used the pump when that lady offered it. It wasn't <laughs> plugged in. It didn't even have a hose <laughs> or anything. Like this little mini pump. <laughs> <laughs> the pump didn't work. She's just handing me some garbage she found. Yeah. Um, but it, it was crazy. Like I literally got bit because like I, I was I was getting impatient. I was just like, man, yeah. like things are not going how they were supposed to go. I'm getting this croc and we're going. So I, we mm-hmm. caught Aries, which wasn't the original plan. We had to catch Aries because the female Cuban ducked into the water. And then after we got Aries all tied up, by the way, the giant pile of debris that Aries was rolling on in that video, that was a giant camp. <laughs> that was a giant pile of donkey shit. I didn't realize that. Yeah. That, that, when you, if you rewatch the video and you see us jumping this big Nile crocodile, and you notice we're on like a pile of dirt. That is donkey shit and a giant, I'm sorry, mule shit and a giant pile that we're jumping on. So then we get that croc into the truck. We taped it up as much as possible. Uh, it was so funny. So, some people there were like, are you going to use that much tape? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to keep going. Next thing you know, the croc is stretching the tape. So we had to tape it even more. Yeah. 
Like, people don't get it. Like, just because uh, people say, like, oh, uh, a child could hold a, a gator or a croc's jaws close. Dude, they have opening Bro, pressure. that's probably the farthest thing from the truth. Yeah. yeah. Like, big gators, you've had them where they're you, know, you could have a whole roll, and they'll, they literally, we call it stretching the tape. You see their jaws just yeah. stretching it. Even David Weathers, when he got bit, he claims it was because this gator had so much opening power, it broke his grip and bit him on the hand. I mean, so. I, I I believe it. Crocs and gators, they will. They're dinosaurs. Why yeah. would they be limited to a hand on their? And they're face? all different too. Like some gators, yeah, whatever. You could you could close it with two fingers. I was wrestling this one gator at the Hard Rock. I'm gripping it, dude, and he's just flexing my hands like like a big nine, half, ten footer. And you're like, oh, is he gonna pop out and grab my? Thumb? <laughs> yeah, because like, that's what alligator wrestlers get bit off the most. Their thumbs, because if you don't tuck your thumbs in, if tuck your hands thumbs. not on the right, right, not in the right place, you're gonna get it put right in the corner of the mouth where they crunch turtles. So yeah. like, your thumbs done. Oh, that's the worst bite. I remember. And there's so many people. There was a little one I got bit by, and I, he got me in the back teeth and just just crunched my thumb. <laughs> so uh, where was I in the story with uh, Miss Toothy? I, I got fed up and I Aries was just like, captured. I'm just going to go in and get her. And I just literally started walking through that p- literal poop water. It was yeah. like overflow water from a gator pond. Poop water. I'm going through it with a stick. Yeah, I don't think it's been filtered in 10 years. Yeah, and there, there was a literal... Uh, there were shopping carts and like... It wasn't a shopping like, cart. It was, it was like the fork of a forklift. There was so much was stuff in, the in water. that water. It was like an <laughs> obstacle in the water. So there's yeah. loose rocks and a forklift fork in there and you know i was just trying to get her and go my idea was to get her to pop her jaws up like she had been doing and throw the lasso on her have her bite it pull her out by the lasso but of course everyone's poking on the outside she just got poked into me and then her head was literally in between my legs and she just chomped at the side of my calf from the inside crazy i remember i'm so lucky that's not gone you came out and i thought she took like your whole calf up i look i looked at alex i was like Dude. <laughs> yeah. I thought your whole calf was gone. And then when I saw it, I was like, whew, okay, like that's yeah, not it ain't as too bad, bad as I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you stuck to the game plan. You kept trying to get that croc out because you knew that I was not leaving. I with thought just Chandler, one crocodile. Martha was like, Chandler, come on. We're going to the hospital. I'm like, all right. Well, I said, like, I, I was said like, he's getting, in a, he's getting in a car and he's going straight to the hospital. Then you walk back in. You're I was like, fighting time to scene. catch this croc. I'm like, let's go. Son. Yeah. I was like, you thought I was going to go to the hospital. And that, that's all back to like your alligator wrestling mentality. Like the show must go on. Yeah. You know? And the same thing happened with the Indian Cobra. You're like, dude, dude the show must go on. Yeah. You know? I need to survive this bite and I'm not going to just not use this footage. I'm going to use it to educate people if I live. There's so many people like, oh, and then he gets back in there. It's like, yeah. And then if he weren't to go back in there, you'd be saying, oh, then he gave up. Like it's it's a double-edged sword. They, what what am I going to let Chris Gillette catch the crocodile? <laughs> for me it's my crocodile <laughs> yeah this is this is a moment that i'm gonna remember for the rest of my life taking like, that crocodile to my one last facility. training session <laughs> not you're like, today. You're like dude these crocs were a train <laughs> yeah yeah i was messing with chris Gillette because he would make videos like tr- uh, feeding the nile and like putting his face up to him and i, I yelled out to him like this crocodile is not trained at all <laughs> he should have trained it to walk in a box <laughs> that would have been great if he trained it to walk in a box life would have been a lot easier that day but i i prefer crocodiles gators and venomous snakes acting like a wild animal. oh we talk about that all the time like if a cobra doesn't act like a cobra why why do i have it you know like if it doesn't have good genetics or this or that like i want a cobra to act like a cobra and i want a crocodile to act like a true crocodile like when you get these animals and you tame them out and you try to portray the perception that that's not what they really are. And then someone goes to the wild and they find out, no, that's what they really are. Like, it's, it's a bad misconception. Somebody can watch your video of you dealing with a crocodile and be in a country like Asia or one of the countries in Asia where there's crocodiles native, not understand what you're saying in the video and think like, I'm going to touch this crocodile. Yeah. <laughs> like they're, and they're going to lean down next to a wild salty on the bank. I've seen videos of it. And they oh, try yeah. to pet these crocs like they're chill crocs in captivity. Yeah. So you want animals to act like how they're acting in the wild you want people because like ziggy for example That's ziggy was them. so chill i'm glad i'm not chilling with ziggy like i used to because if she has a bad day a mood swing she'll rip your nose off or she'll rip your lip off yeah so i'm glad i don't touch her teeth and hug her like i used to yeah you She's know a what, crocodile uh, absolutely crocodiles are so fast too <laughs> like, so people don't understand <laughs> so that crocodile miss toothy's pretty fast she you know she chomped me i came back to the pit we got her and uh we roped her into the box that was said and done and then what, like, Tyler was telling me it was like nine hours until we got to the hospital that night after we unloaded her like, at the property. I think it was probably like four or five, realistically. Yeah. You were like, I want to go to three natives. We're like, all right. I was really <laughs> hungry. After the blood loss, I was like, I need to like re up on my proteins and my. Uh, my yeah. Once the adrenaline came down, you're like, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was like, Ugh. Justin Brown then, was driving. He's like, you good, brother? 
<laughs> you good, brother? And then Chu, before he left, Chu's like, listen, man, rub this honey on the wound and put this grass on it. Shoe I'm like, had a no. Clump of weed. <laughs> he had a clump of weeds, like dandelions and weeds he just ripped out of the ground. Dirt stole on the roots. And he had honey he had collected from wild bees. Yeah. And he's like, wait, wait, before you leave with the croc. I'm like trying to close the van door. I'm like, no, I got to go shoot because she's a crazy ex-alligator wrestler, country rapper. He sang uh, Take Me on Your Buggy. And Florida Gator Cracker. He, he's an OG Florida dude. And he's just like, put these weeds and this honey on your wound. And I have a gash in my leg. Yeah, nothing you but good intentions. Muscles. But at the end of the no, day. No, he's a sweetheart, but he's <laughs> yeah. trying to rub dirt in my literal wounds. <laughs> yeah. And then we get, we, and when we get to the hospital, I'm like, hey, miss. Let me get this on camera. Hey, miss, uh, to the nurse, what would have happened if I put honey and weeds into my wounds? And she was like, that would have made this very complicated and yeah, made she, your situation worse. She said the sugars and the honey would have like caused a, an infection or, or like made the situation Or just the really dirt worse. from the roots of the weeds who's trying <laughs> to sure. shove in my open leg I'm wound. Sure. There was enough dirt in that wound, dude. Yeah, that was crazy. But that's pretty much the story. You guys know it. Catching the croc, got bit, finished the job. But what about other bites? I mean, dude, you've literally witnessed... Didn't, weren't you there the dude. day that Will Nace got death rolled by a bull gator? Yeah, I, I've seen easily probably 15, 20 dudes get nailed by gators. I mean, from Nick the Wrangler out in the swamp to Will Nace to like five bites per competition. Like, seen a lot of people get bit and that's how you learn is like seeing other people get bit and you're like, okay, like, yeah, I don't have to do get that. bit to learn from his mistake, you know? Yeah. And uh, But yeah, back to Will Nace getting bit. That was by lunge or freaking... 13 foot bull gator the first day I started working with him and then Will Nace um, was working with the gator and whatever came out and bit him on the forearm dragged him into the water wasn't there like a birthday party full of kids watching yeah it was Billy Cahee's son's birthday party and they're like please please they're can like we get a lunch show and it was like like I said a series of unfortunate events that led led to this you know because there wasn't supposed to be a show this guy wanted a show Will asked Ian Ian's like all right, I guess so. You know, Will Will didn't have a good night the night before, so it's a series of unfortunate events that led up to it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, basically lunged out, like his name, Lunge, got him in the down. arm, and uh, yeah, pulled him in the water. It was it was crazy. Like Into when you see stuff like hole. that, like you try to like remember exactly what happened, and it's just like so captivating. You you, it's just a blur. You know yeah. what I mean? But, it's an adrenaline blur. Yeah, grab them, bring them in the water, and I'll never forget. Like Will's in the water. Lunge's head is right here, and then Will's head is right here. And next like, to his mouth. Right next to his mouth. While his yeah. arm's in the mouth of the alligator. And then, like, Rob Morris jumps in there. Spud, the crazy old guy we're talking yeah. about, jumps in there, grabs him by the shirt, and just yanks him out. Yanks him out of the gator's mouth. And then, uh... Shit. Yeah, he walks through the little little thing. He's like, I think we need to go to the hospital. I'm like... His bone's broken. Definitely need to go Did, to the hospital. I remember he had his, his uh, ulna and radial uh, bone snapped in his forearm. Dude. That that was the probably the worst bite I've seen. That was nasty. That was the worst bite I've seen by far. And then we had a code word at Native Village. If something ever went wrong, our, our mentor, Ian Tyson, would tell us to go, if something's wrong with with uh, somebody gets hurt, you just yell. Yelp, yelp. <laughs> so, yelp, yelp, yelp. So there's like 20 little kids. Yelp, 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 And then, uh, yeah, like I said, that was the first day I started training with him. So in the morning, I did a show with lunch. Ian's like, okay, this is how you, you get him good, out. Son. And yeah. And then... After Will gets rushed into the car, goes to the hospital, Ian looks at me, he's like, well, that's alligator wrestling, old son. <laughs> and he goes, you still want to work with Lunge? And I'm like, yep. yep. <laughs> Dude, I love that gator so much. L that's one of those gators where it's like, I want that Bro, gator. Lunge has bitten so many people. Like he's, every famous gator person I, I you know of on been Animal Jimmy, Planet. He's bitten Paul Bedard. All of them. Trey Hooten, Paul Bedard, Jimmy Everyone. Riffle. Uh, Trey, like every person who has worked with that, almost every person who's worked with that gator has been destroyed by that yeah. gator. Smashed fingers, ripped open forearm. He's just like a performing gator. Like that's what he does. He lunges and he performs and he keeps his mouth open and he, he goes on the offense when, when you get in that pit, which yeah. is like, like we we're just talking about, we love gators like that. Like you either get like a really submissive gator and then sometimes you just get like a hot, crazy gator. Yeah. yeah. What like. It's all about personality. You got a gator that acts like a little little captive gator. You got a gator that acts like a crocodile. <laughs> yes. And it's spinning and jumping yes. and popping its jaws like a croc. It's crazy because sometimes if you raise like a gator with crocodiles, they'll act like a crocodile. Yeah. It's crazy, it's right? Like, it's like growing up in a tough area. Like you got you to gotta man up. But yeah, Will's bite was definitely the worst. And then... What do you think the second second worst bite was? Oh, seen. I mean, dude, you've seen some. Oh, nasty the guy stuff. who got bit like four times. Yeah, that I mean, actually might be the worst. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's crazy to get split tie bit all over your body. So yeah. you're not just in, in pain. And then I mean, I've I've seen guys get 
you know, bit on their foot and just like nipped real quick. And obviously just like tooth grazing them and blood everywhere. That happened to me too. split my thumb. But, uh, what do you think your craziest alligator show was like an FAWC or like a private show? I think the one, the one where I won was just like the most captivating show. Like the crowd was going crazy. Like I was pulling the gator out by the tail and like I fell down and then everyone was like, Oh, and I got up, ripped it out, and the crowd's like, ah! yes! And that's what I mean. Like it's it's all about like getting the audience on your side. Like yeah. you want to make it look challenging. You don't want to go in there and be like, oh, I'm the expert, and I know what's gonna happen, and this or that. You want it to be like man versus beast, and then think you you can't get it done, and then you get it done. Like that's yeah. a real alligator wrestling show. But keeps people's attention. Yeah, I've never been bit by a big gator, but like at little one, super super small gator bit me on the back teeth. Uh, I got my thumb split open one time. And then my neck, that one time it cut my neck. Yeah, same here. I got a chin split that one time. That was the competition yeah, where I took happens the blood. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, and, and honestly, you, like, you do it to yourself when you're closing the jaw. Yeah. It's doing like a face-off, which is when you put your chin in the mouth. And this one I didn't even know. Like side. He rolled, and then my thumb just got split on the way out. And then James is like, he's like, oh, he, oh no. this I mean, it, it splits my thumb, and I didn't realize, right? I just heard like cracking. And then you never want the judges to see you, you got split up yeah. or a bit because then they're like, oh, you know, point off. I'm like, oh. And I see my hand leaking and I'm like, oh. So I start washing it in the water like to get rid of the blood. And it starts leaking. I wash it in the water. I get on the back. And then it's just like leaking blood all over the gator. And James is like, oh, look at him. He's leaking. I oh. look at the judges and the judges are like, mm. mm going to have to mark that down, buddy. <laughs> yeah. There goes the point. But uh, yeah, I mean, dude, you, you do stuff like that and it's like, it's like an MMA fighter going into a fight and getting split open. And they're like, it's time to ride, you know? Yeah. Like you just finished the show, and it, it feels good at the end of the show when you come out, and you're, you're a little bit bloody. You know, yeah. you didn't really get bit, but you're like, if you just good. get it done. <laughs> you get it done, man. It's what Unless your do. leg is off, you get it done. People don't understand. Like, those gator wrestling gators are wild gators. They're nuisance gators caught days so before. the competitions, yeah. Days before. And then... Boom, they go to the alligator wrestling show, and since they're on the Indian reservation, sometimes they go back into the wild, or sometimes they keep them, and they use them for educational shows. But Hey, RIP to our good friend Tyson's toe. Ooh. Were you I wasn't there day? for that fight. No? No, no, no. That would have been like, yeah, number two or number There's three. There's a famous video that went around of a guy trying to hold a gator's mouth up with his foot, and it's at like a show. That was an FAWC show at a different location, and our buddy Tyson, uh, who works at Gatorland, he literally was holding this thing up with his foot. The gator's nine foot chomps his toe, his big toe, not his whole foot, just his freaking big toe, and full on just death, death roll. Right full on death roll, his big toe. God, I remember seeing the photo and it was like, sh- like clean cut. Oh, Justin lost his finger right in front of me too. Oh yeah, he you, got. You were bit. there that day. I've yeah. seen the video, but there, you, you saw it in person. <laughs> there's a picture, and like my face is in the background. My face is just. Like, holy <laughs> shit. Because it came down like a guillotine. It was gone. Like that. Yeah, yeah. If they get you, like, I think it when it death rolled, it, it got him right at the knuckle, popped his toe off. And then Justin, when he got bit, literally just the force of the bite popped his finger off. That's so And nasty. the finger was just stuck in the gator's tooth, like, in between his two teeth. And then Shay comes by and he's like... <laughs> yeah, he Shay was, like, so gun-ho to go grab that <laughs> severed finger and give it back and be like, here oh. you go. We're... <laughs> See, that's the thing, bro. Like... We just start talking and talking. It's like, oh, yeah, that bite. Oh, yeah, that bite. Like, yeah. You, you, there's so much stuff that goes on. You really just, like, forget it. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm so glad I've been around all of this because, like, we've lived a very, very interesting set of lives. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Like. Good times. Bro, I'm here right <laughs> now. It's, it's been two years and two two summers of craziness. Yeah, yeah. But they're all they're all lessons that, that you have learned. And then another thing is, like, from your bites, you didn't, like, get bit and you're like, Eh, well, it was, it just happened. Like, you're like, okay, yeah, crocodile shouldn't have been in the yeah. water. You're like, snake shouldn't have been free. Like, as long as you're aware that you did something wrong and then, like, use that mistake for the future, you have less of a chance of getting bit. Yeah, you, it, know it, what I mean? you start being stubborn and act like you didn't screw up. That, that's where you mess up. You have to grow from your experiences. And, dude, I, you knew when I was in that water with that Cuban, I lived, before I got bit, I was just like, oh, I'm going to get bit by this Cuban crawl. I, I was in the water, too, at first, and I was like, oh, I'll get two, out of here. Two, a couple feet, and I'm like, I'm getting out of this water, man. Because <laughs> she's literally a, a giant blender swimming around underwater. And you yeah, can't and then, see where she's at. Like, people don't understand. Uh, gators have the pressure receptors just on their face. A crocodile has them all over their body. So if you, like, 
drop a penny over there and drop a penny over there, they can just like locate it and they feel the vibrations coming from wherever what's in the water. That's why I think it's they're like, so fucking badass. Yeah, they even have a built-in like sonar. Marky, they just they kind of know something's in there. Even though she was like goose towards you, like they just know. Yeah, you know? the more the more motion in the water, just kicking around the rocks, like. She doesn't even have to be able to see in that, that poop-filled water. All she has to do is feel that vibration and <sighs> grab your calf and get a nice taste. She literally left off. Like, the surgeons messed it up, <laughs> but she literally put a heart on my leg. Yeah. It was a love bite. I remember. Because oh. if, if it was a hungry bite, I wouldn't there have a There was a, a tooth like this big in your leg, too. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. We saw an x-ray before I got surgery, and there was a Cuban crocodile tooth They were literally like, calf. what's that? And me and Tyler like, that's a tooth. <laughs> yeah. And then I told the surgeon, I'm like, I want my tooth. So if you, you know, you pull it out, please let me have it. And then I woke up from surgery. I'm like, where's my tooth? <laughs> and, and he's just like, oh, it was not a tooth. It was a false flesh folded. It just looked like, I'm like, I Dude, know how an x-ray works. I, I have a picture of the x-ray. Dirty little liar, bro. That was I know. He acted like I didn't know what, how an x-ray works. Like, yeah. thank you, sir, for gutting my leg and making sure I That's didn't in his, it, like, his but... drawer. Like, his nightstand yeah, he, by he, his bed now. He's having, di- <laughs> he's having wine dinners with his buddy, surgeon buddy. He's like, this tooth was pulled out of a <laughs> right, <boy's> leg. Like... <laughs> yeah, he got that tooth. It's okay. I have the real crocodile right outside the house, so that makes me happy. That's awesome. But, um, man, what's another crazy story? What's another crazy bite story? Uh, I don't know. What's a crazy bite story? For what, snakes or for... Um... Anything, anything. Have you ever witnessed somebody get bit by a venomous snake? No. You've seen people almost get bit a bunch. Yeah, a lot of, lot of almost bites. I haven't seen anyone get I'm bit one by of a them. venomous snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm most of those stories. Yeah, I mean, David, I've seen David almost get bit a lot of times too. But I feel like every time David handles, he's just like, just centimeters away yeah. and just like that's his thing pushing it to the limit i mean that's it. what it is to be a performer and that's what people didn't get when i first jumped on youtube and and when you jumped on youtube it's just that we grew up doing wildlife shows we they grew think up you're putting people on they edge think we're doing this for youtube it's like dude we used to do this for fun in the swamp at night in the rain that's the crazy <laughs> thing like like dealing with the crocs or free handling a cobra i used to do that all the time not for photos, not for video. I used to do it just for, for myself. Fun. Yeah, I like to work with my animals. So, fun. but then YouTube became a career for me. I'm just like, all right, time to give people a taste of my wild life. Yeah, like we were free handling venomous snakes, sticking our head in gators' mouths, doing everything long, long swimming before swimming Burmese YouTube. pythons, catching them underwater in canals. Exactly, like even like catching gators under the water, going doing face, levitation, going face to face with bull alligators underwater in the mm-hmm. wild. Max Fish Camp. <laughs> to, the point, to the point where, like, like when I was uh, 17, 18, and I, I met one of my first officers for, like, a, a facility I worked at. He's doing inspection. I'm like, hey, uh, nice to meet you. You're the inspector. And he introduced himself. I'm like, Chandler, nice to meet you. He goes, Chandler Kamenish? And I'm like, oh! <laughs> Loop Road Chandler? <laughs> yeah, and, and he was super nice to me, but basically he's like, hey, you got to stop doing all that crazy stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I want to get my permits, and I want to do a facility. And he's just like, I see you have the enthusiasm and you're passionate about this. Just do everything legal and you'll be fine. But literally, uh, we were so crazy. We were popping up on radars that we should have not been popping up on. Yeah, but that's just the the life we live. Yeah, bro. but we were like, never hurting any animals or anything like oh, that. We were no, just trying to be around animals. Absolutely and, not. I mean, the skills we gained from kids. all of that, we, we've saved and spread so much more awareness from all those experiences, Dude, which it, doubles down on the back end. Like, it's crazy because like in with the ability to have YouTube and, and gather this audience up, not just do people know about our culture down here of working around this wildlife and living in the crazy life in Florida, but also we've helped raise money for conservation. Like, yes. isn't that crazy? Yes. We, we put more our, than anyone. We, honestly. we dipped our toe once like we did it multiple times, but the first time we ever dipped our toe into like helping for a fundraiser for conservation, Crockfest. We, what we raised a hundred and seven thousand dollars. That's Inter- real conservation too. Yeah, helping these people in India have funding to do gharial conservation, which is the mo- one of the most endangered types of croc on the planet. It's that one with the skinny face and the big nose. I mean, I don't know if you tell people, but like you've donated, right there. you've donated a bunch of money to the, I paid the her- King Cobra guys too for the yeah. radio transmitters and yeah. like, like that's the best way to do conservation. Is like. Skip that middleman and give it straight to the source, dude. That, that's know? the best thing about it. And, and honestly, it makes me want to do like our own events. It makes me want to do like our own like meet and greet hangouts, barbecue. I mean, we could do something at the, the facility here, but I also want to get we a should. bigger property. We need a good name, you know, yeah, throw just, a nice party and raise some money. Just like some sort of conservation fundraiser that just like we, we're straight up raising the money for the conservation. And we're going to show you footage of us transporting the gear out to the people in the snakes. wild. That's what we should do. Like King Cobras. Yeah. 
it, dude, it's so easy. Mangshang Vipers. Our, our, <laughs> our, our buddies out in India and in Borneo, throughout Indonesia, these guys don't have the ability to buy these expensive Midwest tongs, hooks, and, yeah. and gear to handle snakes. And we can literally get it here cheap, and we can put it in our suitcases and hand deliver this stuff. Yeah, like a $20 hook could save someone's life. Literally. Like, how about that for conservation? I know, I know. <laughs> like, I donated hooks, and then I went back to free handling. But, uh, <laughs> but the the truth is, like, not, not nobody's going to just, like, see what you do and want to do the same thing. Yeah, there are some people like us growing up watching Croc Hunter and these other people. We want to be just like him and do the crazy, gnarly stuff. But most people say, nah, I'm good. Especially after watching me get bit by a cobra. I don't think anyone's going to want to, like, follow my footsteps on that. Like, yeah. use your tools to be safe. I mean, that's a good point, too. Like, we're, we're doing conservation, but we're also spreading awareness and influencing the youth to do the same thing. So even if like, even if we do conservation and we, we don't like bring it to the maximum level, we could literally influence a young kid who's going to grow up and blow past us and to do more conservation. But without, to, without us, he wouldn't be influenced to do it. He you can know what become I mean? some sort of uh, biotech engineer, some sort of biologist that could just like change the world. We, yeah. we could, we could literally influence a kid to want to become a biologist and to take the axolotl and use its genes to help people regrow their amputated limbs. Like, you never know. Where this <laughs> Please, <Ow! laughs> kid, if you're watching this, hurry up before I get too old, all right? I want my, I want my finger back. Oh, man. When I'm we just, talk about the village, I miss it so much. <laughs> I know. What, what else can we talk about? Because Native Village, like, we've said it a bunch throughout videos in the past, but, like, people, like... And oh it doesn't exist. So if for people who are like Googling native village, like where's this place at? Like it's gone. There's no places like it anymore. The Everglades outpost was kind of close to that, but like, you know, it's not the same anymore because of liability. You can't let teenagers go jump on gators Literally. and learn how to handle these dangerous animals. Like never was there ever an alligator wrestling facility with 12 year olds doing gator shows by themselves. Like we're talking about Florida smiles, face offs, like, Sticking your limbs in their mouth. Dude, there's a video of Scott Cohen when he's like... Oh, when he's 13 <laughs> with lunch. Dude, dude, not even. He had to be like 10 years old. It was insane. And he's like, this is lunch. And lunch is like, whoa. And trying and to bite I, him. Dude, I just said this on the other podcast, Modern Reptile. Think of it like this. Like, when you learn how to do this stuff when you're, when you're a kid, it just comes to you, right? Yeah. So... For us, it just comes to us. If we're, if someone our age wanted to do what we do, it's going to be a lot harder for them to do what we do. It's like learning a second language. Like imagine learning English. It was easy, right? Imagine trying to learn Spanish right now. It's going to be hard. You know what I mean? When you're mucho hard, <laughs> Bro, mucho, mucho, mucho hard. Al dente. But when I you're think... a kid and you grow up and it's just your life, like that natural ability and the natural skill and understanding kind of just comes because you're. You're young and you're just absorbing and retaining information a lot easier than nowadays. Like when Stone and I would grow catching alligators, we literally were in sync. Like we didn't have, like, we wouldn't be like, here's the game plan. No, we go get a <laughs> gator. And it's like, here he knows what to do. You just I'm going to do this. He's going to do that. And we're yeah. going to move this animal and we're going to take care of business. Yeah. And that's how it is for like, like croc captures and stuff nowadays too. Like when we move the crocs, it's just like. You kind of just go with it. Yeah. It's always good to have people you've been around your whole life. No matter what plan you have to plans change when you're catching stuff yeah, <laughs> like they change <laughs> crocodile doesn't understand the plan you have to adapt but yeah that's the funnest thing in the world is moving animals moving crocodiles it's so fun man what uh let's go move something <laughs> yeah it makes me want to go catch a gator right now honestly like i mean bro tell me about the new facility how's that going because I'm good. The new Crocs are looking good. I, I know you just started getting them the going heat from you. Going good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't been posting them much, but they're just getting acclimated, you know? Like, people don't understand. Like, you put a crocodile in a new exhibit, you think it escaped. Like, they just yeah. disappear, dude. Yeah. And just finally, all four Crocs ate. Just finally, like, one's coming out and basks, basks on land while you're there. But they're they're really, really shy. So, it, it's going to take a couple months, but the new Crocs are doing awesome. Got a bunch of other stuff there. Big a bunch shout of out gators. to Locks Crocs. Yeah, Locks yeah, Crocs. Your new facility, Locks <laughs> Crocs. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. We should do like a conservation thing there too. Big barbecue. That'd be great because that's over in Loxahatchee, West Palm Beach. A lot easier to get to. Like my property is easy to get to, but like I, I, I can only let so many cars park on this property. So yeah. we'll do like a, a smaller private event here. I mean, hey, future. 13 acres. We could make some parking. <laughs> we could figure it out. We could definitely figure it out. Locks Crocs. Locks, Crocs. What's the, so you just got a uh, Cuban crocodile, now a crocodile hybrid that's mainly Cuban. So it's like 75%? 75%, three quarters Cuban, which is like the most beautiful one. And the best for the animals 
you know, versus Aries, half Nile, half Cuban, it's better for the croc to be more Cuban than Nile because the tooth structure is so different. Yeah, you see it like like all four teeth. It goes from like big, big, small, 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 small. Like the only all the curved ones. Oh yeah, yeah, just like that. Because for the people who don't know this, watching Cuban crocodiles have curved teeth like fish hooks, kind of like a python has it curved towards the throat, but a Nile crocodile it's more so straight. So when you get a hybrid, it, it, the animal kind of like struggles with the tooth production because it's got yeah. two teeth that are going that the way. The Cuban genes are definitely way. overriding. Like like if Which someone were to see that croc, they'd be like, oh, Cuban. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it just looks like a Cuban. It's but. a beautiful croc. It's so yellow. Hybrids are awesome. We hey. talk about hybrids all the time. Like what if we were to mix this and this and this? Like a lot of people hate them because in all honesty, it does muddy up the gene pool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not good for conservation. Yeah, if 40 hybrids get pushed out into the wildlife trade, you know half of those hybrids, people are going to be like, oh no, this is purebred, and then it's just going to muddy up the gene pool. But That's the worst. If somebody doesn't tell you, and you're yeah. not able to see it yourself. But yeah. like, dude, I'm all for breeding endangered species, getting pure bloodlines going. Like, that's what I want to do with the Cubans. I want to yeah. do that with Siamese. But also like Aries... Even though he's a hybrid, dude, he's from Native Village. That crocodile means a lot to me. That's yeah. one of the first crocodiles we worked with when we were little kids. I'd like to make some hybrids, but just like only incubate three to five eggs. And then like, you know where they all go. Yeah. You, know you don't I mean? want to send them to different yeah. places. Yeah. Cause then, yeah, you're muddying up the gene pool. One of the biggest crocodiles to ever exist in captivity was a Siamese salty, salty. hybrid yeah. over at what? Myrtle beach. Oh. Alligator adventure, I think it was. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought it was like somewhere in Australia or the Philippines. I mean, dude, or they something. they have pure salties that are just like what about 18, like um, feet. remember what was it called? What was the show? Python hunters back in the day. Yeah, they Sean went. Heflick, they went to they that saw some, some huge ones. Yeah, they, they're they're like let's just catch this giant twenty foot croc for fun. Yeah, it's so fun. I'd love to do a TV show like that. Yeah, what about TV? You know, like I I, I always we got offered. Uh, that Python hunting TV show. They're always trying to do something TV's on Python dead, hunting. bro. That's the thing. <laughs> TV's I'd dead. I'd rather be on YouTube for the rest of my life or at least like some streaming networks like Hulu or Netflix. Like Man, you ask a, a series, little kid if they want to be on TV or be a YouTube guy. They'll, he goes, what's TV? <laughs> what's TV? What's TV? What does that mean? Oh, you're like, no, Animal Planet. They're like, what's Animal Planet? <laughs> what is that, turtle videos? <laughs> Remember when Animal Planet got all soft for a couple years? They would, dude, dude. They, they went were, from like soft for making puppy videos to going to making straight up rednecks hunting. Yeah, like, so it's, like it's like what? How do you go from Jeff Corwin, Steve Irwin, uh, Austin Stevens, all for conservation education, to like moose hunters in Alaska? I like, love those guys, Austin Stevens, man. And then uh, <laughs> you know who saved the day for a little bit on Animal Planet? Who after Steve Irwin left us? Who Turtle Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where we got it. <laughs> um, Billy the Exterminator. <laughs> Billy the... Oh, my God. What is that, Amy? He's like, yeah. Uh, like Spike We got this alligator. We got to get out of a swimming pool. I was like, he, oh. made, he made Frost Tips cool. <laughs> like, Mom, I miss Steve. <laughs> oh, dude, I I love Steve Ruin. I, I, till this day, I'll rewatch his videos. And it, it, it's so crazy because, like, you know, some of the people we grew up around in the animal world, the older guys were like, oh, Steve Ruin this, Steve Ruin that. I'm like, I don't care. I... I Fucking love Steve. Dude, Ruin. they just like he got me hooked on crocodiles. The, the the most loved guy is also the most hated guy too. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's crazy. Like let, let's be real. I got. I'm not saying everyone loves me, but like, bro, in the animal world, holy shit, a lot of people were hating on my ass. Girl. Yeah, yeah, it's jealousy. Yeah, I was just too happy. I was like it's jealousy. Uh, I, I was like my my friend Mason, who's helping us with recording this right now. Like Mason's a super happy guy, and sometimes yeah, people is. take <laughs> sometimes people take that as like, is he being sarcastic? But like that's how I was when I was young. I was just like too nice to everyone. Yeah, they, and then I got taken advantage dude, of. Dude, they so nice. really gave you like the shit end of the stick, at, like all the adults back in the day. You know what it is, bro? Everyone has like the Steve Irwin mentality. Everyone wants to be Steve Irwin in this industry. So like when yeah. one guy is the closest to that, they just hate on him, which literally right now you're the closest to Steve Irwin. <laughs> like that's crazy. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. I, I'm, crazy. I'm definitely not a badass Australian dude, but I'm a badass Florida man. I'm proud to be from Florida. Stay away from the stingrays. Hey, Flor <laughs> if, honestly, I saw a pair of stingray boots for sale the other day. I was about to give that to our buddy Ryan for his dude. birthday and say, I got, I got the one that got Irwin. I saw these guys fishing in the Amazon and they were catching the Amazon stingrays, the spotted ones. Super cool dude yeah they're no, they're things. beautiful they're beautiful yeah. like oh, i had a permit to own those but i didn't get any yeah yeah you can get them i'd, I'd love to get them man those get a giant Arapaima. display tank i wanted air palm in my pond but blake's like oh you, they, they won't let you put them outside i'm like what maybe <laughs> what? maybe a little paper written up <laughs> yeah i don't know man there's so many rules but they have good reason because these arapaima these, which is a giant fish from the amazon for you guys who don't know it's like a giant tarp tarpon that gets over 10 foot yeah they're turning up in like random lakes here in florida Dude, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of rules that I, I agree with, you know? Like, same thing with reptiles. Like, everyone's like, nah, 
I, it's it's my right and it's like yeah but but yeah this is why you know what i mean like this stuff gets out and you guys like we we, we let you do it and and you couldn't handle it so now we got to start yanking but some like of this literally stuff. there there was there was a bit of regulation where it was just like get your permit make sure your cage has a lock and a label and you can own a reticulated python that's the world's longest snake and eats people every year in the wild yeah and then people like abuse that and next thing you know they change it to like a prohibited permit so that's the thing like people will hate on the permits but it's because like so many people do such bad stuff behind the scenes that you don't hear about yeah and it's like dude like, we, we stuff need gets laws. out and you don't want a 25 yes. foot snake that can eat a dog or a small child to get yeah. out. And I mean, dude, let's be honest. Like not everyone deserves to have retics. No, <laughs> it's like you said, it's, it's a, it's a privilege, not a right. Why is it? A, why would it ever be a right to own a, a croc that can eat people or a snake that can drop you dead? Like yeah. you should, you should have like protocols and yeah, inspections. Like a, a thousand hours. That's, that's fair, dude. That's yeah. so fair. <laughs> like when we we're little kids, it was a thousand hours to get your venomous snake permit to own any kind of venomous snake. And then as we're getting older, going through native village they changed it to like a thousand hours for every uh family like, i know like viperidae alapidae so cobras this and that and it's like oh more work but like all right we'll do it yeah like, i, ha I had to document four thousand hours to yeah. get you know both families of snakes and then class two and class one crocs and took me 10 years dude i i i submitted over i know you did two for crocodilian i submitted over the hour requirement for venomous snakes and oh yeah crocodilians just so like they understood i this oh, is all sure. i do and this is all i care about and when they see 10 years bro of work yeah. they're like all right just all right like yeah. obviously this guy and it, it keeps people safe like why wouldn't you want to work with these animals before owning them yeah i mean you know like, us bro like like you have to get the we experience. hate those guys who want to just cheat their stuff it's like no 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 because uh, i did it the right way so you're gonna do it the right way yeah too. and then and then if you if you try to cheat the system and fake your hours dude you're gonna get slammed. you're gonna get you're gonna get nailed you're gonna yeah. eat, i'm not even talking about like legally i'm talking about like you're gonna get eaten by an yeah. animal or mm -hmm. you're gonna get killed and you see it in the other states where there is no requirements like there's more bites and there's more there's more escapes, escapes and there's all this dude. stuff bro yeah you know, pe people try to like try to crap sometimes on us keepers down here in florida because we're a little bit on the wild side but we're more professional and clean when it comes to records bite protocol I lock dare... cages snake proof room inspections inventory all this oh, stuff yeah. that's so important to keep everyone safe like why why would you want somebody living next door to you with a, a random mystery number of deadly snakes from around the world not know what they own yeah not know if they're prepared for a bite not know anything and all those laws like reflect on it like i guarantee if you pull the statistics and you do the research our numbers are way lower oh, of yeah. bites and this and that. You know what I Dude, mean? Dude, there are people in other states like, and, and I'm not trying to come down on, on the venomous reptile community or whatever you want to call it. Cause like we come from like the wildlife. Oh yeah. Representation of like, like zoos and whatnot. Like, yeah. We don't know who's legit and who's not, but we know yeah. for sure that some of y'all are not but like, legit. Bro, <laughs> if, if a dude's losing like a spitting cobra in a neighborhood, like apartment complex, like, Dude, yeah, or bad. like people get mad because like we can't do like venomous shows here. It's like I kind of understand why you like, want your oh, kids walking around next to like venomous snakes with with a taped lid. Like, what's that gonna? Listen, do? we've seen a lot of people handle venomous snakes. Not everyone's good at it. And no. imagine somebody who's not that good at it taking their mamba outside in the grass. And you know, like you put a reptile outside in the sunlight, it becomes a wild animal again. Oh yeah, it's like a brain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> trying to bite you. Absolutely, man. So no, I, I, I like Florida, the though. rules. I like the rules. It, it, it makes you work hard for what you really want, and it proves like to the state like who's serious about it and who's not serious. Yeah, yeah. It proves you're dedicated yeah. for sure. Because why not be just clear as day and be like, yeah, this is what I own. This is how what we're using them for, and this is uh, this is how we keep it secure. Yeah, nothing's a secret. No one likes that secret venomous guy at the end of the block. No, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, that's so scary when somebody keep because like in this area where I'm at, there's a lot of like old school people that keep crazy random stuff like. Like, there's a dude down the road who kept, at one point, 50 cassowary birds. We're talking about the world's most dangerous bird that can kick your guts out with a nine-foot toe claw that's like a shank. Oh, no part of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's like he can have those because he has them for agricultural purposes. And it's like, what? Because mm -hmm. he says he eats the eggs, he can have those giant... He doesn't keep them anymore, but it's just crazy. And then I hear from, about... Uh, from the bait shop, this guy's like, this guy next to me used to used to keep uh, black mambas and random venomous snakes, and he never has permits. And he would we would find random colorful venomous snakes in the yard, and we didn't know what they were. Oh so yeah, we, we would kill them. This was what the guy from the bait shop was telling me. I'm like, dude, there's a story of someone near me, someone gardening, and they get bit by a um a long skinny green snake, and they're almost certain it's a green mamba because they administered like the African anti-venom and it, it worked for the person. So they're pretty sure a green mamba in Florida bit someone in their garden. How crazy yeah. is that? 
Yeah. yeah. I remember some, <laughs> I remember one story about like a mamba biting a bird in front of this lady and it dropped what she thought was a mamba and it turns out it might have been a mamba bit a bird in front of her and it died and she's yeah. like that's not good and she called <laughs> she called somebody that would go to the village she called uh, one of the exterminator guys that would bring animals I forgot his name mm-hmm. you remember what I'm talking about oh he was, he was a crazy guy so yeah, was like, like the guy Gary who tried to sell us yeah yeah like Gary, Gary. Yeah, he like tried to sell us venomous snakes Gary or like 10. don't like, do that nah we're good yeah that was crazy the village oh you know what's a crazy story from the village is uh the sweat lodge story. I was just about to say. <laughs> that was Cause like, crazy. Cause like, dude, we didn't work uh, for the, the Seminole tribe of Florida or, or technically Miccosukee, but like we were friends with some of the tribal members that would come out there and hang out. Yeah. Like the village was run by like people who were like Hawaiian. There and, was like, some Cuban and stuff. superstitious stuff that went on. At the there village. was a lot of crazy stuff that like to be around that Native American culture and, and to be little kids and then actually see crazy stuff. Like, dude, we saw crazy things after that <laughs> spiritual sweat lodge yeah like that's that's why like i do believe in the native american religion so much because we saw concrete physical evidence of like i mean besides crazy see, stuff. besides seeing 10 to 15 grown sweaty men with no shirts on <laughs> we we saw like wild spiritual stuff being there and you it was give all the people like a little background on on the sweat lodge so the sweat lodge was basically constructed of like sticks and tarps and it was just you know giant river rocks kept in fire until they turn red and all the rocks were kept in the center and what would happen is they would take different herbs and whatnot and burn them on the rock to fill the 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 hut with different scents and aromas and basically everyone would take turns praying and uh, trying to connect with their spirits, their their family members, and, and really just try to make positive in their life. And we were there with our mentor. We were there with Native Americans. And Stone and I were like 14 it was so hot years old. We were like little kids. You had to take all your jewelry off because it would melt your skin. Yeah. How hot it was. And we're passing around a tobacco pipe, like praying <laughs> on what we need. And you hit that tobacco pipe way too long. <laughs> yeah, they're like, damn. All the, all the adults were like, whoa, Are Stone? you sure he's 13? <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Like, what do you remember that from that night? I remember <laughs> making fry bread before it and like heating up those river rocks all day. Or no, I think they heated them up for like three days, something crazy. And then, yeah, like you said, they push the river rocks in with like a pitchfork. They dump water on it. The water creates steam and you just start sweating. We're and they're cooking. like, they're like, you could cook an egg right here. And uh, yeah, like everyone takes turns and they like pray and they go in a circle. And they were like, soon you'll see the green dots. He's like, the green dots are our ancestors. And literally, like, these little green dots. Hella green dots. Like Hella green dots. Jumping in the middle of this sweat lodge. And I'm just looking at the train like, what? And then there was, there was three rounds. So, like, you go in, you sweat, you come out, you talk. You go in, you sweat, you come out, you talk. The, the babies would go out. Yeah. And cool off. <laughs> yeah. The men would stay and cook. There was the last round. They called it the buffalo round. I'll never forget. And they're like, okay. Only the men go to this round. They're like, you want to do it, boys? And we're like, oh, yeah. Oh, let's do it. (laughs) And it was hot, dude. It was super hot. And I just remember like being in there just like dying. And they're like, if it's too hot, get low to the ground. It's cooler (laughs) towards the ground. And I'm just like laying as close as I can to the ground. And Chandler taps me. And I'm like, (laughs) I look over. (laughs) Chandler's covered in dirt. His whole body. I burrowed. I was hot. I was trying to cool off. He found like a little pat, a little spot of dirt underneath all the blankets and rubbed it on his body because the dirt was cool. And then he was like, here, here's Rub dirt. The dirt on I you. grabbed the dirt and I started covering myself too. Yeah, we were going to like die in that, that sweat lodge. It was crazy. Dude. We, we could have passed out from heat exhaustion. Imagine the lawsuit our parents could have had. Yeah. <laughs> well, we signed a waiver when we first two started. Two young boys <laughs> die in sweat lodge. <laughs> Dude, it's it's crazy that our parents would even let... Like, at one point, my mom didn't even want me going. My mom and stepdad did not want me to go to the village yeah. anymore. Because they're like, you need to do better in school. And like, you're obsessed with putting your hen in a gator's mouth. Like, yeah, we, would, we right. would like smuggle you there sometimes. Literally, Chandler, you, come you guys on. would like kidnap me <laughs> from my house. Start you in the minivan. and <laughs> you, You'd be like, we're going to go hang out at Blake's house. And then be like... Oh, we're not driving back home. And I, I lived like an hour and a half away or like an hour away. I was like, oh, dude. All right. It was crazy. So we had a so cougar fun. in the back. Uh, yeah. uh, skeet or uh, Skeeter. Skeeter. Skeet. Or yeah, it was something. after Skeet, the, the old manager. And uh, there's the baboons. There's quadamundis. There was crocodiles, caiman, alligators, king snake cobras. Rooms full of snakes. It was crazy. We were barefoot doing venomous snake shows. Oh, yeah. It, it's like the craziest thing you could ever think of. Literally a bunch of little barefoot kids running around 
Gator tooth necklaces. Yeah, have you ever watched <laughs> Will Nace's videos and wonder why he's never wearing shoes? That's why. Native <laughs> yeah. Village like burned it into his head not he to wear shoes. He used to wear shoes before he came there. He shut up with shoes. He left with he no shoes. He showed up with shoes and he left with no <laughs> shoes. That's Native Village. <laughs> And they would, like, have parties there all the time because, you know, they needed the funds. They needed the money. Yeah. So they would throw, like, the Jamaican parties. They basically and, like, rent out to the facility. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was, like, these super young kids who were, like, at these parties. <laughs> and, like, we we're spending the night at this animal facility. All the adults would go to bed and we're, like, let's run around and catch gators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go mess with the gators in the pit. Yeah. Like I said, it was not like we grew up in one life. We're, like, or not like we grew up in one day. We're, like, hey. We want to do this. It was just our life. We lived we're, we're, it. Yeah, we are just born into it. Like, always itching to get a ride out to the Everglades to go road cruise. Oh. Or just itching to get in the wrestling pit. We would literally Mom. rake leaves, <laughs> clean dumpsters out with maggots. We would oh, do yeah. the nastiest crap. We would, we would go we would, dumpster diving every day, remember? We, we would move a, a whole uh, attic full of heavy furniture and old washing machines mm. to an other area of the property <laughs> just so we could be in the wrestling pit for five minutes. Just so we could move it again the next week, remember? <laughs> yeah, Uncle Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Tony. Tony. <laughs> Uncle Tony be like, you guys doing anything? And we'd be like, at first, yeah! And then after the first six times, we're like, uh, we're busy, Uncle Tony. We, we're, we don't have time right now. The characters there we met, like J-Mart and Rick Rita and like all I don't these think crazy, an alligator. All these crazy guys, dude. Yeah, literally the wildest people I've ever met in the world. Like, I'll never forget. And we still talk to some of these people here. And oh, there, yeah. It's just life. Everything floats and spreads around. Everyone goes in different directions. Yeah, for sure. But the a band lot of broke those, up. A lot of those guys like grew up and really did nothing with their life. And it showed us like, hey, like we need to do something with our lives or not. If not, we're going to end up like those guys who used to hang around. And that's why I respect you know Ian Tyson so much besides the fact that he can wrestle a 13 foot gator and beat anyone's ass in a bar uh he taught us he'd be like hey you boys you, you might enjoy this but stick to school yeah he's like you do not want to do this he's <laughs> like you don't, want to, you don't want to be stuck wrestling gators the rest of your life and I'm glad that we got like a mix of that like we really wanted it but at the same time we learned that we had to really like figure out how we're gonna pursue our careers and, and do what we're gonna do it yeah. just worked out for us honestly there, there's a lot good. of people who they are like that, though. Like, they are just enslaved to a wildlife park or for someone else's facility, and it's like, that's not the way to go. Like, if you do want a career in animals, you need to find a way to make money and have your own spot. If not, you will, you'll you'll be enslaved for, yeah. for almost it's, ever. It's either that or you have to, like, work your ass off to get a degree just to be in a manager position at a zoo. Yeah. And even that doesn't pay well most of no, the time. No, it really doesn't. You know, like... It really doesn't. I'm, I'm really lucky to be yeah, in this like, position to do Even herpetologists... You think those guys are getting paid? Like, from what? No, they're not. <laughs> like, what they're, are, who are paying those dude, guys? The big payoff for, for herpetologists is, you know, for the hope to make some sort of conservation effort with new evidence. But, like, it's really just to get a paper out. Yeah. To or, get a paper out yeah. their name on it. And or that's, the, like, the achievement. Or the recognition. Like, splitting a species. Yeah, the recognition of finding a new species or studying a species and figure something out that, that other guys don't know. And, but. dude, I always thought, like, I, there were certain points in this career where I was just like, man, I wonder if I'm still young. Should I go back to school and become, like, a zoologist or a herpetologist? But the reality of it is I can do more for conservation nah. doing YouTube. Yeah. Doing YouTube and doing the wildlife shows like I've been I mean, doing dude, since I was a kid. I mean, dude, there's guys who went to school to do what we do, and we're over here, like, Teaching surpassing them. them just Like, if you, know the, if you know some people in the animal industry, you'll get farther than the people with the degrees, you know? Like, yeah. it's all about who you know in the animal industry rather than, like, having the degree and them hiring the guy with the degree. You know what I mean? Yeah, because who, who's going to be more reliable with moving a crocodile? Somebody who's read about crocodiles? <laughs> yeah. Or somebody who's caught dozens <laughs> yeah. and dozens of crocodiles? Yeah, like wild gators and crocs and certain yeah. kids, yeah. It's all about experience. Experience is key to get through life. It's all about who you know and experience. Yeah, hands-on. And we're just lucky as hell to meet some of the wildest snake handlers, croc handlers, big cat handlers. Dude, imagine if like we our, our families weren't in Broward County and we were in like Tampa. Our whole lives yeah. would be different. Even <laughs> just, just so that different. little and people are probably listening to us like what do you mean? That's still Florida. Isn't that close? No, no it's a huge difference. You got like That's South a cultural Florida shock when it comes like, to animals. Everything else. But yeah, South Florida is really where it's at. South Florida is where the gator wrestling was yeah. really homed in, you know? Like South Florida, like East Coast South Florida too. Yeah. Not East East, Coast, like the West South Coast, there's nothing over there. Exotic wildlife parks, uh, Native American wrestling arenas for, for like the Miccosukee Village, all the different spots for wrestling out there, mm -hmm. the Hollywood Reservation, the, the Brighton Field Reservation. And the thing about the Native Americans, it was all about respect, like respecting the animal and understanding 
like what role those animals play in your life and in the wild, you know? Yeah. So it was like through all of this, like even from the village, like we, we really gained like respect. You yeah. Know what I mean, like the biggest thing about the gator, it's like, you, yeah, you don't go into the enclosure with an alligator and manhandle it and look like the champ. No, you talk about how the alligator keeps the Everglades running and yeah. how the alligator was used to keep families going and the Everglades used to keep native American families thriving yeah. in an environment that most people cannot thrive. Yeah. Whether how, it's living how, off the food or like doing shows and making a living to feed yep, the family. Yep. How important they are to feeding the family. And then how important alligators are for providing water during the dry season to all the other animals. Yeah. Like that was the two major things. Digging out a hole, bringing the yeah. water up and then he gets to pick what's, what's on the menu and yeah. managing all the other animals. So they don't go up in numbers with the population. Like, bro, I fucking love gators. I <laughs> Me love, too. Let's go. <laughs> I, you know, I love crocodiles. I love gators. People know us as venomous snake dudes or the venom boys or whatever they want to call crocs. us on the internet, but we're sickly obsessed yes. with crocs. Bad. Like <laughs> I, they are the true dinosaurs. They, they're better than dinosaurs. Yeah. They fed on dinosaurs. Like even when we were kids, like it was never like, Oh, it was never like, we want to do venomous snake shows. It was always, we want to wrestle a gator. Like that yeah. was it. That was it. We want to be up there in the zone with the animal, moving them around or just feeding them, just being in the presence of a dinosaur. Yeah. And a, a lot of people like crocs too, but like we all know like venomous snakes for like the social media thing are obviously more captivating. They get more views, but. Me and you wish it was the other way. Yeah, you know I mean? that's why. Like, no matter what, <laughs> you and I are going to still push crocodile content, oh, alligator yeah. moves, all that kind of stuff because nothing is more impressive than a massive alligator or crocodile slamming its jaws on a prey item or lunging at somebody during a capture. It is insane to see these animals perform and do what they do. Real life dinosaurs. Like, oh, I, you you never understand it too. Like from a, you could see a picture, a video, and then you see one in real life. You're like. Oh my god! Like yeah. it's just so different. Bro. You see something like that on the on TV, and you're just like, "Oh, they're adding sound effects." Yeah. <laughs> and then in real life, it's going. <laughs> they yeah. roar, they gurgle, yeah. they hiss. They they are real life. Like bull gators make some sounds. You're like, "Oh my god!" Like even, <laughs> dude, even when a crocodile or alligator is just eating some food, and it's going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like making these crazy dinosaur sounds as it swallows and belches. Like yeah. they're gnarly. And you oh. can. I, I, I hear I hear storm out there. <laughs> I, hear I hear him brewing up a storm out Settle there. Settle down, boy. <laughs> Stone's kid out there. He's uh he's wrestling uh, my camel right now. Yeah. But uh, dude, I really appreciate you coming on this podcast today. I, and, I, and I hope that you come on plenty more podcasts in the future. I know you are making your own podcast. Have you figured yeah. out a name yet? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty dialed in on uh the Wildcast is is what I want to do, and I'm I'll be launching it off the main channel. But yeah, we'll That's probably a be good calling name. the Wildcast. The Wildcast. That's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh no no Wildcast or Wild Talk, one or the other. Either way, but, it, yeah. it's gonna work. Yeah, you just got to start making the videos. That's yeah, it. Exactly. Just start making the damn videos. <laughs> yeah, it's like social media. All you got to do is start. Just start. That's mm -hmm. what I tell people when they when they say they want to do YouTube, they want to do any of this stuff. Just just start making videos. Just yeah. start doing it. Do something you really enjoy so the passion comes out and just enjoy it. Yeah. And it's like, even for like education, like we can make a video and then you can make a podcast that's an hour long and you're just going to get loads of information and like you really get the full grasp and like you get to see someone in their true character, yeah. you know, because we both know like you're filming a video. We're worried about audience retention yeah, you and this exciting. and that, but it's like, it feels nice to just sit down and have a have a nice conversation dude what know? i'm most excited about is the fact that like as time goes on you and i are going to be moving crocodiles around we're going to be transporting different animals working with different animals and we just jump on the podcast and talk about it yeah and that's it just talk about how <laughs> we, cool we were saying was. like we should do a podcast and then like go catch the croc and then come back and be like Whoo, that was crazy <laughs> that didn't go as planned as we thought <laughs> yeah i think that's going to be great yeah Let's so, do it, man. Cheers to you, bro. Cheers to being brothers for so long. Yes, and, sir. And I'm excited to see your YouTube career flourish and this podcast shit go down. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Ding. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Go check out Stone on Stone's World. His YouTube. We'll put a link if you get that podcast out when this comes out. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful. Stay passionate about what you love. And uh, keep on rocking and rolling. <laughs> <laughs>